Chapter 2 Present Day The bed makes a faint creaking sound as Lysander takes a seat on the edge, shortly after throwing off his coat and unbuttoning his poet's shirt. Slowly, bordering on thoughtfulness, he removes his white gloves and carefully places them on the bedside table. For a moment, his attention lingers on the ring adorning his left ring finger. His intense gaze follows its forms and sinuous curves where the gold meets a set gem, black as the deepest night, with a few splashes of blood red in its center. Slender fingers close around the ring, and he twists it back and forth as his jaw clenches. Thanks to the magical essence of this accessory, he can harness its dark sorcery and envelop himself in an aura that calms most people's worries and captures their trust, keeping them blissfully unaware that they are standing face to face with a beast, a blood-sucking monster. Before becoming a creature of the night, he had been an individual with hopes and dreams in his heart, his identity shaped by the rest of society for being an illegitimate son. His existence had been a mistake, created by a human mother and a high elf father. Perhaps that was why he accepted his fate that night he lost his life and humanity. He became a beast, stalking the shadows in search of blood by night and a false reflection of its former self by day, hidden below a veil of black magic. Head weighed with thoughts, Lysander glances briefly at the mirror in the room, where the absence of his own reflection causes him to avert his gaze. His former good mood shifts to gloom, rain dripping from the clouds in his mind. Slowly, he unties the ribbon around his neat ponytail and lets his long hair flow down over his shoulders and chest. He lies down with his hands clasped behind his neck, closing his eyes. Although he no longer needs to sleep, resting allows him to replenish his dark powers. Dreams are not prevalent. His rest comprises a dark haze that embraces him from the inside with soft fingers. It balances not only his mood, but his heaviest thoughts, replacing them with a pleasant emptiness. Sometimes fragments of memories dance before his eyelids, and normally, he does not pay much attention to them. But tonight, they greet him again. The memories from a long time ago. Hi, stable boy. How do you keep your hair so tidy and neat when you muck? His eyelids flutter without him opening them. He can still recall the sound of her voice and her smile which lit up her face and the way she teased him to entice his tongue into a conversation.